Tears on the Moon. Tears on the Moon is a Kabya folktale about how the moon developed its streaks. The Kabya people are an Amazi ethnic group indigenous to the Kabya in north of Algeria. They represent the largest Imazen speaking population of Algeria and the second largest in North Africa. Traditional folklore told from the Kabya and in general Algeria often encompasses music, traditional dance, stories, and other aspects of life. Their stories also often describe their view of creation. Good evening, my name is Omar Ben Allah and I'm from Morocco and Algeria. Long, long ago, before time was counted in minutes, days, weeks, months, or years, there lived a lonely girl who had no name. She had no name because she had no family to name her. The lonely girl was the first orphan on earth. Delicate and gentle-voiced, yet no one offered to be her mother or father. She traveled aimlessly from place to place, searching for a family. During that time, the world, which was fresh and new, did not know what tears were. While the lonely orphan girl was full of sorrow that welled inside her, she could not shed tears because the earth did not know them. Instead, the girl swelled inside, unable to express her sorrows. Soon she became unable to speak and could only drag her sorrows and herself around the world. As the girl traveled, a curious thing happened. The moon would rise and gaze down at the girl, and feeling overwhelmed with compassion, the moon tried to send messages to tell the lonely girl that someone was watching over her. First, the moon sent white moon beams, but the girl did not notice. The moon had the stars twinkle and turn full face towards the girl, but still, the girl did not notice. Her misery blinded her from the moon's love. Finally, the moon decided to go down to the earth to find the girl. The moon found the orphan girl dragging across an empty desert and scooped the child up into the sky. But the moon warned as she rocked the lonely child, you cannot stay here with me forever, for I belong to the sky. I belong to all people. The lonely child began to fill again with sorrow, thinking of the lonely, cold earth. And the moon told the child, let your sadness flow. It's all right to let out your sorrow. Suddenly, another curious thing happened. Without understanding what was happening, the orphan girl began to shed tears, the first tears in the world. The moon caught the tears on its surface, and freed from her sorrow, the orphan felt tremendous joy. And from that day on, everyone in the world was blessed with the gift of tears. The girl returned to earth filled with love and joy, which brought other people to her. And wherever she traveled, people welcomed her into their homes. And the stains left upon the moon still remain for us to look up at the sky and see the pools and streams of tears that once flowed, a reminder of how the moon protects the earth and the joy of shedding our sorrows through tears.
The Legend of Tislitz and Isli. The Legend of Tislitz and Isli, meaning wife and husband in Tamazi, is a traditional Imazan tale that tells of how the Tislitz and Isli lakes in Morocco were formed. The two lakes are located in Imulchil, a small town that hosts their own version of Musim near the lakes. Musim is an annual cultural and wedding celebration across Morocco. Seen as an annual fair celebrating new weddings and as a fair of economic, cultural and social functions, the Musim is also a symbol of unification among the varying nations, whose discordance at one point brought the demise of a pair of star-crossed lovers, named Tislit and Isli. Hello everyone, my name is Sada Shewi and I'm from the Reef tribe of Morocco and Algeria. Long ago in the heart of the Atlas Mountains, there lived a young girl named Tislit. Tislit was wondrously beautiful, full of spirit and charm. One day as Tislit was taking her sheep outside, she came across a young shepherd named Isli. As they spoke, the two developed a strong relationship. Before separating, they asked each other of their names. My name is Isli of the Ait Yezza tribe. Heart stunned, Tislit replied slowly. My name is Tislit of Ait Ibrahim. The two knew their tribes were sworn enemies, but they continued meeting in secret, their love for each other growing stronger. Too overjoyed with her love, Tislit revealed her affections to her mother in confidence. That same day, Isli shared to his father that he wanted to marry a girl named Tislit, a girl of another tribe. Neither one of their parents could overcome their differences. They could not approve of their relationship and eventually the two tribes fell into war. No longer able to live apart on a moonlit night, Tislit and Isli met secretly on a hill between the two villages. They knew they could not change their parents' hearts and the two burst into tears. Their tears flowed together and eventually created two lakes under the mountainous hills. It was in these two same lakes, now known as Lake Tislit and Lake Isli, that the lovers exchanged vows and drowned themselves in order to be spared of an eternity apart. Finally moved, but at a moment too late, the two families were laden with guilt and sorrow. The tribal elders finally decided to never allow such a tragedy to occur again and granted their youth the right to choose their own life partner. To this day now, the two lakes, Isli and Tislit, still stand near the Emil Shield town. And to this day, the Ait Hadiddo, the Ait Yazza and Ait Ibrahim, which are branches of that larger tribe, celebrate the Muslim Engagement Festival, where young men and women can meet and engage freely of their own love. Thank you.
The King and His Prime Minister, originally written by Abderrahim El Makuri. This story comes from the storytelling traditions in Marrakesh, Morocco. Alikia, or storytellers, are the root of oral history in Morocco. There is even a saying in the Marrakesh Gemma El Fena Square, the physical site of Morocco's ancient storytelling tradition, that when a storyteller dies, a library burns. Storytelling traditions date over a thousand years in Marrakesh as a method of passing on cultural beliefs, teaching children moral lessons, and serve as a form of entertainment through the tradition of Hikayat. Hey everyone, my name is Ahmed. I'm from Egypt, and I'm here to say the king and his prime minister story. So there was once a king who had a prime minister who was called It's Good. They gave him this name because no matter what the king said, the minister always re remarked, it's good. One day, the prime minister met the king in the garden of his great palace, where he found him idly chopping a small piece of bamboo with, with his dagger. The dagger slipped on his bamboo, and the monarch sliced a piece of his finger off. It's good, the prime minister exclaimed. The sovereign wrapped a bandage on his finger, but he did not think it was good at all. In fact, he was so angry that he ordered the, the politician to be locked up in prison and left there to rot. Some days later, the king wanted to get away from all of his problems and the endless intrigue in the palace, so he decided to, to take a voyage by seas. He boarded a ship and sailed away. After many days on the ocean waves, the vessel came to an island. When the king arrived at the island, he thought it was beautiful and disembarked on his own. But no sooner had he left the boat, he met some natives, and they warned the, the king that on this island, strangers always captured Strangers were always captured and sacrificed at dawn the next day. Before the king even had time to think about this, he saw a group of fierce-looking soldiers running towards him. They chased the king, caught him, and brought him to the high priest. Now it was a tradition on this island that before they killed anyone, the high priest would check if he would make a good sacrifice. So the soldier took off the king's clothes to see whether anything was missing because they could not sacrifice a body that was incomplete. When they brought the naked king to him, the high priest noticed that a part of his finger had been chopped off. And when the priest saw this, he said, stop. This man cannot be sacrificed. Give him his horse, his weapon, and let him go. So the king hurriedly went back to his ship and left the island. As he was sailing back, he began to think about the prime minister, who was still in jail, and remembered what he said. 
The king thought to himself, oh, he was right after all, when he said that it's good that I cut my finger. If I had not cut my finger, I would have been sacrificed. And when the king came back home, he freed the prime minister and told him all about his ordeal on the island. Then he asked the prime minister, how was your time in jail? The prime minister said, it's good. <laughs> the king was amazed and said, how can it be good? Well, thank God you put me in prison, replied the prime minister. If you had taken me to the island with you, you would have escaped, but I would have been sacrificed. What's up, everybody? Um, <laughs> I hope you're having a good time. Uh, Samogo 2020, we have taken you to our choral Africa, and I want to take you to more contemporary music. I'm going to sing some Afrobeat for you. I hope if you know the song, you can join along. Um, feel free to have fun. I'm 
what they got to you. No one, I know one. I know one. Damage to me, my nigga. 